Hi and welcome to Tech Bike Pots. Today we're going to be showing you how to install our CNC uh, billet machined adjustable brake and clutch levers for the Royal Enfield Interceptor. We don't normally do a video for installing these. Uh, normally a paper instruction suffices. But in the good old bloke way, a lot of people have been trying to fit them realising they're hitting a problem, then reading the instructions afterwards. So we thought we'd better do a video. And also there was another point that we wanted to uh, get across, is that quite a few Royal Enfield dealers seem to think the Himalaya and the interceptor levers are the same. Now you can fit the Himalaya lever to the interceptor, but there is a slight problem when you do it. And I'm going to show you how to do that, what the, the issue is there now on the bench. I'll show you what the difference is. So I'll just show you what the difference is between the uh, CNC levers for the Himalaya and the CNC levers for the interceptor. Now this is a, a lever perch off an interceptor and it has the clutch switch mounted inside the lever. Now the special mountings we've had machined up have a little ramp on here that contacts with this switch and obviously when the clutch is pulled in it presses on there. Now the ones that they use on the Himalaya, although it will actually go in there, it's a bit tight, you probably have to file it down a bit to get it in there, but that's not the issue. The issue is it doesn't have this little ramp on the back, and also it's thicker on the back, and if you do pull it in, it pushes too hard on the switch and snaps it off. As you can see, it's got a lug on the bottom, and that's the, the switch on the, intercept, on the Himalaya is actually mounted on the bottom. And this little uh, tab contacts against the switch on the bottom there. So, like I say, it's a popular misconception. And I've had two Royal Enfield de dealers both say, oh, we've got them in stock. We, we, uh, we just supply the Himalaya ones. But the front brake one does fit. Front brake's exactly the same. That's, that's the interceptor one. As you can see, there's no difference. But you can see quite clearly the differences on the clutch one. The shape here is different, the, the, the centres are slightly different on the, on the clutch pull, but it's most importantly is this little cam here that contacts on the switch. Now, going back to the switch, even with the standard lever, if you don't take this apart properly, you will damage the switch. Um, and what I recommend, I'm going to show you on here first of all, before you do anything else, it, it, you obviously you do it on the bike, but I'll show you on here because it's much easier, is to take these two little screws out here underneath. Just the number one Phillips. And then you just remove it carefully. And you can see how delicate that is. There's two tiny little pins either side. And any side to side pull on there just snaps those off. So that is a very delicate item. And I highly recommend you remove it before you, you try changing your levers. I do clearly say this in the instructions, but like I say, nobody seems to read the instructions until they have a problem. So we thought we'd better do a video on it first. But we'll get, get back on to fitting the levers on the bike. So, uh, the tools you need to do the job or a, a 10 millimeter spanner, a 12 millimeter spanner, and an eight millimeter spanner, a flat headed screwdriver, and a number one Phillips screwdriver. So, as you can see, the, the levers aren't the prettiest on, on this bike, and it, it really sort of lifts the bike when you, when you put the CNC levers on. It also gives you reach adjustability, which is a handy uh, uh, little thing to have, especially if you're short or reach on the hands. Um, and you can get the, the, the lever set up really where you like them and they're very well ergonomically designed as well as well as looking really nice on the bike so first of all you need to take the little the, the two screws out of the switch and then you and then just pull your switch out of the way to to stop it from getting damaged. And obviously put your screws somewhere safe. Next you need to loosen your, your, your clutch cable off on the, the uh, clutch case and on the, the right hand side of the bike. I've already done that but use a 12mm open end spanner to do that. And then you can just pull your clutch cable up and pull it out the bottom of the holder. 
like that. Now what you need to do, you, you can't get the clutch lever out of this wheel. A lot of people have tried undoing it and trying to pull it out and that damages the switch. That, that's the thing that normally damages the switch, trying to force it out. You haven't got enough clearance between the switch gear and the clutch perch to get the lever out. So you've got to slide it along a bit. And next you get your 8mm spanner and your 10mm spanner. Take, take the nut off with your 8mm spanner. And then you undo the threaded step bolt with your 10mm. You'll see in a moment. Why I moved the perch along. You see there's there's not enough clearance to get that out unless unless you move it along because of this. And what happens is people try to pull and that digs into the switch and breaks it. So to install your new clutch lever, it's simply a matter of reversing it, but what I do like to do is, is just pop a little bit of grease on the pivot. And on the heel where it contacts the uh, the switch and a little bit in there and the pivot as well. Any uh, good multi-purpose grease, this, this is red line multi-purpose grease, it's probably one of the best greases you can get. But any sort of general purpose grease will do you. And it's normally easier if you just put, pop your clutch cable in there first. Make sure it's right in and it pivots down in the slot there. Pop your bolt back in, make sure it's located on the shoulder end of the thread. Just wind that in a little bit. And just nip that up. And then you put your lock nut on the bottom. And again, just nip that up. If you pop your clutch cable back in, now what you need to do is adjust the cable up on the bottom. I'll not do that at the moment, but you need a little bit of free play once you, you don't want it tight, otherwise your clutch is going to slip. You, you need to have about that much free play before the clutch starts to engage. Now you can slide your perch back against the switch gear and just nip it back up again. Unless, of course, you want your lever in a little bit, but what you've got to be careful is clearance for your, your flash switch and stuff like that. So all you need to do now is pop your, pop your micro switch back in, pop your, make sure it's located on the little pegs, and pop your two screws back in, and you're ready to go. And now you've got adjustment on your reach there, as well as free play on your cable. So you can get the, the lever up perfectly where you want it for reach. Right, we're going to do the, the brake now. So for your front brake, you need to uh, first loosen your 10mm nut off underneath. And just take the little lock nut off. And then you've got a, a flat headed screw and stepped bolt in here. You just need to unscrew that. Now, before you take it off, you notice you've got a bit of free play. At the end of the lever, I would say it's probably about 10 millimeters there, before you can feel it actually hit the piston. It's operating straight under the, the rod there, but it, you can feel there's that bit of free play before you hit the piston. Now, this is very important. When you fit any brake lever to any bike, always make sure you've got this free play there. The free play is there for a reason. Once everything heats up on your brake, and it does heat up very quickly if you start using it quite hard, all your fluid will heat up and everything in the braking system expands a little bit and it takes a lot of that free play up. And if you've got a brake lever that doesn't have free play there, it's sort of tight up like that before it starts operating. Once everything expands, your front brake will either lock on or when you apply it, it won't come off properly again and it could actually cause an accident. So that is very important when you're fitting a front brake. So again, we'll just uh, pop a bit of grease 
into the pivot hole. Now as you see that you've got a, a brake light switch operating rod on the bottom here and that contacts the switch on the on the bottom there you can hear it click so when you put it back in obviously make sure that that's contacting the switch properly and you also want to put just a tiny bit of grease in the cup there because the, it does rub at an angle on that so just make sure that's located into the cup you may have to push it across a little bit just pop your shoulder bolt back in there make sure it engages in the threads properly Literally, you don't have to go crazy tightening this up, just nip it up and then tighten your lock nut up underneath you, see, you may have to hold it with a screwdriver just while you do a final tighten on the lock nut there and as I said before, you can feel the free play before it actually starts to take up movement on the piston and that's very important and also if you listen carefully you can hear the click of the micro switch for the brake light but you can check that electrically as well to make sure that's working so again we've got reach adjustment there on your brake which is very handy never have it reaching so it comes too far at the bars because if you do two finger braking if, it, if you've got it too far back you you could in theory jam your fingers this one even on minimum adjustment won't do it but if you've got spongy brakes and you put it on minimum reach adjustment you could sort of nip your fingers in there so always have it a, a reach where it's still well away from the bars and obviously to ch check the electrics on both your switches check your clutch switch make sure it's operating so you can start it up in gear with the clutch in um, and make sure that your, your brake lights working on the rear there which it is okay so that that's about it all summed up there now uh, if you've got any questions about them send me an email and uh, to the usual or just email, message me through YouTube we will be getting some more um, interceptor videos out soon we're just waiting on some parts coming um, getting made and then once we've got those we'll be uh, putting another video up on the interceptor okay so thanks for now see you later bye